Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the sports betting show brought to you by a real statistics professor. This is Major League Baseball for Tuesday, August 27th. Folks, a couple of quick updates at the top here. First off, Dub Club free until September 1st with the link in the show description, that QR code. Sign up. You're going to get a lot here in the next several days, baseball and college football. Cousin Jared and I will be recording the first college football show of the season in mere 24 hours from now here on Tuesday night. That'll drop either late Tuesday night or early Wednesday morning, depending on uh, when you are awake and when you get stuff uh, like this sent to you. So we've got a bunch of content coming for you. Still free until September 1st. Sign up for the Dub Club today. I do not have a recap for you here. We got to get right to it. I've got a baby that's like about to wake up and need to be fed. So <laughs> I didn't have time to make that, that slide. Um, but we do have three picks for you here. Of course, though, in, in full transparency, last week we broke even on the overall, the A plus grades. My favorite picks lost a unit. The parlays that I gave out one a unit. I only give out about one every other day. I'm not a big parlay guy. It's only two teamers. So it's not crazy, you know, hitting for home runs. It's just an occasion. There seems to be like there's some good good plus expected value. There's made a unit there on those three plays over the week. Lost unit on the topic. So broke even. A little disappointing in that. Hopefully we can do better this week. Uh, you know, heading forward Monday so far, starting off, I think pretty good. I haven't tallied it up yet, but we won in the afternoon. Just got another winner that came in right now. Looking good on another one here. So I think we're doing okay here to start off the week, but uh, you know, you never really can tell uh, in betting. But some reminders though, before we get to it, uh, community rules model information that's at pickswithprofessor.com slash new. If you're new here again, this is a player-based model, right? It's reflect the current roster, who's injured, who's healthy, uh, who's been traded, things of that nature. The average grades 100 higher implies more runs. We are projecting an average game. I do not know what's going to happen in one individual game. The idea is that we look at the world and probabilities and that helps us know what price makes for a good bet, what number makes for a good bet. Anything is a good bet at the right price or number doesn't mean you'll ever see it, but we have to know what that is. And that's how we make money in the long run. I don't know. I cannot tell you what's going to happen in one game. Anybody who's telling you they can, unless they've got some inside information, uh, you know, that's, that's not really how it works. Right. But we, we long, slow and steady. We, we know that variance is real. We overcome that with a large enough sample size over time in order to profit. So we've shown here this year with baseball and in so many seasons passing. That's why I, I encourage people to check out Dub Club. Uh, you know, the people there are, are we got so many of you over there on the club who are so loyal, have been with us for so long. Uh, the people over there continue to tell me how my retention rates are among the best they've ever seen. It's because we get people and then they start making money and they don't leave. So check it out again, free until September 1st. Uh, that's all we got there. We'll get to it here. Starting for the Ashes of the Philly, 640 p.m. Eastern. Going to be a warm night for Philadelphia, mid 80s to start. Uh, you don't see that temperature for night games too often. We're still going to finish up around almost 80 degrees, wind blowing out at 5 to 10 miles an hour. It's going to be very hitter friendly there. The other thing that, that's factored in here, in, in my opinion, Aaron Ola, uh, we've, we've long talked about this, a little bit home run prone. It hasn't been quite as bad this year, but folks, we can just look, we always talk about this, the difference between FIP and XFIP is uh, actual home run rate and, real, uh, and uh, expected home run rate. Nola's XFIP 362, his actual FIP 403. What does that mean? That means he's allowed more home runs than expected. It seems to happen every year for him. His home run rate just gets a little bit higher. I don't know if it's because he throws a lot of fastballs up in the zone, uh, something like that. Uh, you know, this is a great night uh, for home runs to be hit. On top of that, you have Justin Verlander, who I know looked fantastic in his last start, but his underlying metrics still very concerning, uh, almost a full run higher uh, than his ERA. I think Verlander's fine at this point, at least. And, and we talked about this last week coming back. He's going to have some good starts. He's going to have some rough starts as well. This Phillies offense is really, really good, as you can see on screen there. Right now, the number five offense, according to the side of the Astros offense, even though it's hobbled, is still pretty good. We're going to go over. Eight and a half on this one. The projected total, as you can see, at the bottom of the screen is nine. Um, I don't really know why this isn't higher. We did expect a few more runs on Monday night than we got. There were like 20 base runners, 20 guys left on base. The teams were combined like three of 20 with runners in scoring position. 
that sort of thing happens. It's actually happened more to us recently than than not. And, and we've talked about this over on Discord, I think, that, that we've kind of been stuck in the mud here the last several many weeks, kind of overall just kind of breaking even. And, and, and you know, one way to look at that is, hey, breaking even over the last month after – strong profits for three months that's okay uh but it is a little frustrating we've had a lot of those that's not something that's gonna happen all the time it will happen on occasion we talk about variants all the time that's real uh but in general hey if we keep getting those base runners we're gonna win more than we lose and that's what we talk about here on this show it's not about winning every pick we lose a lot of picks but we win more than we lose and or the prices make us more when we lose. And so it's a situation like that. If we get those same base runners we got on Monday night, again, we should get plenty of runs. I don't see why this one's any different. I don't see a lot of difference between Blanco and Verlander. Both guys' underlying metrics are questionable. They're both kind of average at this point. I think Wheeler's a better pitcher than Nola. So when you look at the, the comparison between Monday and Tuesday, starting pitching might take a little bit of a step back. The weather's just as nice. And if all those base runners happen again, I think we can get a lot of runs. So we're going to go over eight and a half. Again, the model is projecting nine. But as always, folks, remember, shop around. have multiple books in your portfolio. If you don't have an account there yet, BetUS is a great book to sign up with and add to your repertoire of places where you can shop around and find the best number. Every nickel you save, every dime you save, you win more when you win, you lose less when you lose. Again, check out BetUS today. The link to sign up is in the show description. BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. We'll continue on here with the Braves and the Twins. Uh, folks, first of all, I love this pitching matchup here. This is the longest combination of names I think I've seen all season. Spencer Schwellenbach versus Simeon Woods Richardson. Uh, there's just a lot of letters happening there. Monday night's game get a little bit weird. First off, the Braves scoring nine runs here in the first couple of innings when they've struggled so much offensively, that was a little bit weird. You had the weird the rain delay, uh, the weird skies, if you haven't seen the, the pictures, that, that that was kind of a, a, a crazy game. You know, maybe back to a little bit of a normal night here, hopefully on Tuesday. At least for now, it looks like it'll be clear from rain. Uh, it'll be a little bit of a chillier night for summertime, probably pretty normal for Minnesota, around 70 degrees, maybe upper 60s. A slight breeze either in or across. That could affect the projected total on this a little bit one way or the other. Uh, but Schwellenbach has been fantastic. He's a guy who looked insanely over his head. At the start of the season, I questioned why he was still in the big leagues, not sending him down. They let him work through it in the, at, at the big league level. And folks, you know, we always know, but they see more than we see, right? And so, of course, you know, I can ask the question. I'm not seeing what they see. They saw some things and thought that he could work through it. And boy, were, were they right. Now, part of it was they needed him. I thought at the time there were other guys at AAA who could have come up and, and done just as serviceable as a job. But he really turned it around and has become one of their best pitchers, one of the best pitchers in baseball. His ERA now is below four. And that's after a couple of just insanely, he just got lit up starts. His FIP is at 319. His XFIP's at 312. This feels a little bit specific. Spencer Strider-ish, and he's had a couple of those double-digit strikeout games, just a guy coming out of nowhere and dominating. Right now, his grade at a 76 is really impressive, folks. The rating there, I think, is off on the screen for starting pitchers. He's not the 76-rated pitchers. You can see it just pulled in, unfortunately, the grade next to it. Uh, but he's up there in the top you know, 20 starting pitchers right now, according to sideline, uh, looking incredibly good. Simeon Woods Richardson is very average. Go up against what's become an average Braves offense, given their injuries. You know, Monday aside, both these teams have incredible relievers. I'm going to go under eight in this one. Again, you see the model there projecting 7.6. I think this should be seven and a half. Uh, of course, the wind could change things a little bit, but it's not strong enough that I think it will change it more than at most a tenth of a run from that projection. Either way, that should still start with a seven at this point. I'm looking to back Schwellenbach any way that I can. I think the do that here in this game is the under eight and one more to wrap us up a late game raised in the mariners folks we talked about this before with cousin jared 
who again is a reminder, first college football show. We'll do that tomorrow. So stick around for that if you're interested in some college football stuff mere 24 hours from now. But sometimes, folks, you just got to play the hits. And this one uh, is no different. It's going to be a chilly night in Seattle, mid 50s, wind blowing in, in what's already the most pitcher friendly ballpark in baseball. Folks, you know where I'm going with this. Jeffrey Springs has looked pretty respectable here in the last couple of starts. That first one, he coming back was a little bit shaky, but he's been a little bit better here as of late. And of course, this Mariners offense. Uh, can struggle to score runs. The Rays can struggle to score runs, and Logan Gilbert, especially at home, tends to do a pretty good job preventing them. I don't really know what else there is to say here about this. Uh, the Mariners' bullpen is the weakest part of this equation uh, at this point, and they're still very okay. And in that park, they tend to not give up as many runs. Uh, the Rays' bullpen has now become a strength of theirs uh, as they've kind of hung around the playoff race to, despite actively selling off and waving the white flag. Uh, and it's not been because of their offense, it's been because their bullpen and some starting pitching has done well for them. I'm not expecting many runs in this game. We're projecting a total of 6.1. I think this should be at six and a half and they should dare you to go under at six and a half. I'm probably passing, maybe looking towards the first five market, maybe a team total market or something else to get invested in it. But at seven, I love this under the push protection on what was going to be the most common outcome, uh, you know, in baseball, probably seven and nine are the two most likely things. But when you talk about games at T-Mobile Park, it's seven or maybe even five uh, are the most common outcomes. And so I, I love the fact that we get the push protection on seven. doesn't mean there can't be eight or nine runs in it. But in general, this just sets up to be a very low scoring game. We've had a lot of these unders in T-Mobile Park. Most of them have won, not all of them, of course, but most of them we've bet them early like this and gotten in on these unders, whether it's a full game under the night before, maybe a first five in the morning. They tend to drop about a half run. I saw one recently drop an entire run on the full game total. So it wouldn't surprise me if this closes at six and a half or if you have some massive juice on the under seven. Right now it's just minus 110. We've already set this up at Dub Club. So I'm not sure when you're watching this, where the number's going. You never know. Obviously, I hope you get better odds than that. Uh, but in general, we've seen these numbers get bet down, and that's been the right call in this ballpark for most of the season. I expect the same thing here. So under seven, again, lock it in as fast as you can if you haven't already. If you're with us on Dub Club, you probably, are, probably already locked it in hours before I'm even recording this. Again, so your best bet there on the late one, under seven in Tampa and Seattle. That's all I've got for you. Again, remember, join Dub Club today free until September 1st. You will get a ton of information that I provide, all the notes that I give, that I read off of, that I glance at my own thoughts typed up, all sorts of metrics, all sorts of goodies, a lot of fun in the Discord. Again, free until September 1st. Sign up today if you haven't yet. Check out that link in the show description. Otherwise, though, thank you so much for watching, and we wish you the best of luck, reminding you that you can eat your betting money, but please do not bet your eating money.